Hey yo. Now, we all buy motorcycles for different reasons, and I think it would be fair to say that most of us aspire to do a spot of motorcycle touring at least once a year, even if it's just a weekend away. And although our motorcycles might be comfortable and work out great for us on that 10 mile a day commute to and from work, travelling longer distances often reveal sort of inherent problems with a motorcycle that we need to fix before we can travel further afield. That's part of what motorcycling is about, or it is for me anyway. Which is why it's so important that we maintain our right to modify our bikes. Now, one of the things that Royal Enfield is very good at is providing accessories that allow you to do just that. And a couple of weeks ago, I fitted the Royal Enfield touring seats in brown to the classic 350. Ordinarily, when I make a video like that, I'll sort of video fitting the seat, explain how to do it, and then I'll review the accessory that I've fitted. Unfortunately, on this occasion, the weather conspired against me. And I decided that the review of the actual seat itself would have to be a separate video. Now, in the comments section to that video, I got quite a lot of requests for the touring footrest, which I didn't have. And to be honest, there weren't an item that had really, you know, popped into my head. I'd not considered them. But because people had mentioned it and the fact that I injured my foot about two months ago, I thought I would give them a try. So I picked a pair up while I was at Hitchcock's. Now, your plantar facetus, which sounds rude, but it isn't. It's the muscle that covers the sole of your foot. I've got no idea how I did it, but I tore this muscle about two months ago. And this sort of injury, which apparently is quite common, also takes a long time to heal. It can take up to a year. The pain for the first month was excruciating. It feels a bit like someone's glued a Lego brick to your heel, so every step you take is agony. And apart from first thing in the morning when I first get up, it's calmed down a lot now. But obviously, when you're riding a motorcycle with a standard footrest, all the pressure from the weight of your leg while you're riding is on the weakest and most vulnerable section of that muscle. So, although I can go a few days now and almost forget that this injury is there, 10 miles on a bike and I'm in agony again and it plays up for at least a couple of days afterwards. Now, these touring pegs from Royal Enfield are sort of a halfway house between a full footboard and a standard footrest. And I was curious to see if they might help me with this problem. So, my intention today is to show you these footrests, show you how to fit them, and then do a separate review of the touring footrests and the touring seat together. And hopefully I can get that review filmed and up for Friday morning. Or at least that's the plan. Now these are of course the genuine Royal Enfield Deluxe or Touring foot pegs. And I would like to point out at this stage that this is not a paid promotion. The only revenue that I get from these videos is either through the advertising revenue from the adverts that you see during and before the video starts, and any kind donations through the Super Thanks button. And I will of course leave links for these foot pegs in the video description down below for those that are interested. Now if you're anything like me, when you see these foot pegs, you're not going to be impressed. And you probably won't be impressed with the look of them when they're fitted. They look a bit, how shall I put it, clumsy. But I'll urge you now, give them the benefit of the doubt until you see the full review video. Obviously, Royal Enfield have done the best to make these footrests look as nice as possible, but there's a limit to how successful that's going to be with an enlarged footprint that these foot pegs have. They're designed to be ergonomic, like the seats, they're designed for long distance comfort, and I think they deliver. They take the form of a large rubber foot pad. Ignore the white residue on this. I think that's part of the moulding process. It just wipes right off. It provides at least three times the surface area to rest your foot on. Maybe four times. And the whole assembly is 
of a cast aluminium construction. If I was to hazard a guess, I would say these have been sand cast. In isolation, they do look a little bit rough and ready. But having said that, they're not particularly expensive for what they are. They come with the Hero studs pre-installed, but there are no other fasteners or fittings in the box. You reuse everything that is already on the bike. Namely, the clevis pin, the sair clip, and the foot peg spring. Now, I would recommend that you carry out this installation on a relatively clean concrete surface. Don't do it on gravel, don't do it on grass. Inevitably, some of you will drop this uh, clip. It's very small and you won't be able to find it again. Over the decades, I must have spent literally hundreds of pounds on uh, clip pliers and I couldn't find a single one that would fit this uh, clip. Your best bet is just to use a clean, small to medium sized flat bladed screwdriver. Unless, of course, you have the correct uh, clip pliers. Just lever it free of the groove at one open end. Cover it with your finger so it doesn't spring off into the fifth dimension somewhere. And then carefully pry the rest of it free. Now this is basically the same setup that Triumph use on their Bonneville models. The only difference being the sair clip that Royal Enfield have chosen to use is made of much stronger stuff than the Triumph equivalent. So some sort of tool is required to remove it. You can usually get the Triumph ones off with your fingernails. If you choose to use this screwdriver method, just be careful not to scratch the paintwork on the actual mounting bracket. You're then free to withdraw the clevis pin. Before withdrawing it completely, just make note of how that spring engages into the footrest bracket and onto the footrest itself. Remove the spring and obviously be careful not to lose it. You're going to need this for reinstallation. Now I'm working on the left hand side foot peg here. So take your left hand foot peg and offer it up. The curved portion of the fitting on the foot peg should be uppermost. If it's downwards, you've either got the wrong foot peg or you're trying to fit it the upside down. It's essential that that curved piece is on the top because that way if you do ground your foot peg it will flip up rather than pole vault you across the road. I noticed that Royal Enfield had liberally doused this area with a sort of a thick oil rather than a grease which is unusual. So I cleaned the oil off and replaced it with a good quality grease. That'll ensure that long term the foot peg can move up freely. If it needs to do so, it'll also protect the spring from corrosion. You don't need to absolutely blather it in grease, just smear a thin coating to keep everything free and protected. Of grease on your clevis pin also helps and then it's time to fit your new foot peg now this is the tricky bit luckily Royal Enfield haven't used such a heavy duty spring as those used by Triumph which does make fitting a little bit easier but getting the hole through the spring the holes through your footrest and the hole through the footrest mounting bracket all to line up is always a little bit tricky. Perseverance and patience is required. And you might need a little bit of assistance from the screwdriver just to coax the actual spring into position to get everything lined up. Make sure that the straight long end of the spring engages into the hole in the fitting bracket and that the L-shaped end sits over the top of your actual foot peg, as you can see here. Now, as you can see here, the ends of the foot peg itself are cut at an angle. I was actually having trouble getting the pin all the way through here because I was holding the foot peg itself straight. Now, I thought this might be a manufacturing fault and I was tempted to get a file and dress the leading edge which you see at the top part of the fitting of the foot peg here off a little bit to even them up but then I held off because I thought this might be intentional I do think it's intentional once you get the bottom hole lined up this foot peg does sit or fit at a slight angle at first it looks wrong to the eye but it actually makes perfect sense once you start riding the bike
Now, once you've got the clevis pin back in, all that you need to do, obviously, is replace the sear clip. I spent ages messing around with a screwdriver and found, eventually, that you can do it quite easily just using your fingers and your fingernails. All you have to do is place the sear clip on the end of the clevis pin and then whilst holding it in place with one finger, use your fingernail to press one of the open ends down into the groove and then just carefully massage it around until it all slips into the groove. And that's the job done. Now, the right hand side is exactly the same. The only slight complication being that the exhaust pipe is sort of in the way, but it's not really. This whole job really shouldn't take you any longer than 20 minutes, half an hour for both sides. Now, I know some people are not going to like the way that these particular footrests look. They are a bit of an acquired taste, but the whole point of these touring foot pegs is that they're designed to be ergonomic in order to do a job. I think it's one of those cases where function has to override form. Although they are growing on me a little bit now. Right, so full review coming up on Friday, not just for these footrests, but also for the touring seats. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you would leave a like and if you're not already a subscriber, I'd also appreciate your subscription. It doesn't cost you anything and you can unsubscribe at any time you like. As I've said, I'll be back on Friday, so until then, please, ride safely, and I'll see you soon.